Sarah and Abraham. Sarah or Sarah and Abraham. Why was the letter H added to Sarah and Abraham? Hefcheth is the eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and means a field, something perceived, or that can be cultivated in short, spiritual perception. In the story of Sarah and Abraham, we find the marvelous truth that age imposes no limit or barrier to the birth of the incorruptible seed Peter, for it is eternal life. Sarah, at the age of ninety, is told by an angel that she will give birth to a child. Abraham, at the age of one hundred, received information that he would be the father of an offspring. Immediately following these revelations, the letter H was added to both names. See 16th and 17th chapters of Genesis. Abraham and Sarah now find Isaac, which in Hebrew means laughter or happiness. Thy seed shall be as the sands of the sea. Unto Abraham and his seed was the promise given, and unto thy seed, which is Christ Paul. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, David, Solomon, Isaiah, etc., etc., are not historical characters. Pontus Pilate, Darius, Pharaoh, Herod, are names of ruling offices or functions not certain individuals, no dates being given to any so-called transaction in the scriptures, or to any of Paul's epistles, nor to the Acts of the Apostles. Pilate means dart, javelin, I've given up, death. Pontus means sea, the open sea. Marine, Herod means heroic. Pharaoh, rulership. Darius, Coercer, conservator, see presidency, judgeship, etc. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John, once and chapter. W O R D. This combination of letters does not mean, in its first and original sense, voice, sound, or speech. Physiologically speaking, it means a precious substance. Therefore, as mankind must be placed on their feet physically before the same condition can exist mentally and spiritually, we must get down to fundamentals and give the physiological meaning of W-O-R-D. The Hebrew alphabet consists of 22 letters, each letter having a concrete meaning. In the formation of Hebrew characters, letters were chosen, which, when combined, indicated plainly every phase of that idea which they wished to express. Let us now take W-O-R-D, dissect it, and understand the meaning of each letter. There is no letter W in the Hebrew alphabet. That which they used to designate our letter W was VVW which is also used in our modern French. Its meaning is hook. The arm and legs are the hooks of the body. VV, then, or double V, is the 18th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the characters which they used to express that letter were written thus, tzadi, almost unpronounceable. This letter is also, as we write it, the eighteenth in our alphabet. Its number has a great significance. As the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Teth, represents the equilibrium of the father and mother, the perfect balance of the male and female, or positive and negative forces, as manifested in the perfected or completed human being, so the eighteenth letter, Tzadi, or double VVV, is the representation of the fall of spirit toward the material world or the material body and its passions. In astronomy it corresponds with the zodiacal sign, Aquarius. As the sixth letter of the alphabet, Dath, 
expresses the struggle between the passions and conscience, the antagonism of ideas. So the eighteenth letter, VV, which is three times six or six hundred sixty-six, represents the beast which we read of in Revelation, the Adam man. On the mental plane we use the expression he friend for this number, the lower mind, the material mind. In astronomy the affinity of this letter six is the bull Taurus. Mankind, living wholly on the material plane, is hence a beast a beast physically, mentally and emotionally. Animal on three planes. Thus in the Tarot we find that 18 represents antagonism. Placing the two V's toddler, one over the other, they represent the two arms and the two legs of the regenerated man, as the upper V or triangle points downward. In the regenerated man the hands are folded together over the head in adoration of divinity, and thus the apex points upward. In the lower triangle the same change takes place, the forces hitherto misused, going downward and outward are sent upward and returned to the holy of holies. The triangle becomes closed at the bottom and opened upward. The letter W, then, or VV, represents the earthly or Adam man, the material body and the lower mind. The letter O, the sixteenth letter of the alphabet, written iron in Hebrew has somewhat the same meaning as the first letter, but in a deeper sense alludes to a material building, an operation in the visible and material world. The materialization of God, the Holy Spirit, the entrance of the Holy Spirit into the visible world, the Tarot tells us. Since God, one, is individual or undivided and undifferentiated, to manifest in the material plane, God or that must divide, must become two halves of the circle, must manifest as positive and negative, male and female, electricity and magnetism. From this we deduce the expression, dual power or dual operation dual force. In astronomy this is represented by the sign Capricorn. These dual forces, operating within us, thus become the goat, which bears away the sins of the world circle material body. In the average human being, this dual power is not operating in harmony. The action is unequal. If these two currents operated in harmony in the human body, the regenerated man would be manifested. The flesh would have become the word itself. The letter R is the twentieth letter, written Resh, and the symbolism of this letter is most wonderful. It represents the head of man and is, therefore, associated with the idea of original and determined movement. It is the sign of motion itself, good or bad, and expresses the renewal of things with regard to their innate power of motion. It corresponds to Saturn. You rest also symbols rest. A ship may rest on water that is in motion. The description of the inner meaning of this letter, in the Tarot, throws a flood of light upon it as used in its present position in WORD, as it has a deep esoteric significance. To quote, You a tomb opens in the earth, and a man, woman and child issue from it, their hands are joined in sign of adoration. How can the reawakening of nature under the influence of the word be better expressed? We must admire the way in which the symbol answers to the corresponding Hebrew hieroglyphic. Comment on the above quotation is scarcely necessary, yet for the convenience of those not yet able to figure it out for themselves. Let it be said that the tomb, cave or manger, is the birthplace of the seed, the word, the son of man which redeems the Adam man, if not interfered with. Under the influence of the word indeed, is the carnal man, 
dead in trespass and sin, reborn to a new life. The letter D, the fourth in the Hebrew alphabet, as also in ours, is written daleth, and means the womb, or door, mouth. It denotes abundance springing from division. Thus daleth expresses a creation made by a being, according to divine laws. It expresses domination of spirit over matter. The Terah thus wonderfully interprets its meaning. In the divine reflex of the Father, it is the will. In the human reflex of Adam, it is power. In the natural reflex of natura naturans, it is the universal creative fluid, the soul of the universe. In astronomy its affinity is Jupiter. Summing this up we can see that the letter D stands for the solar plexus in the human body, as it is the reflection of the true Son the Father, and the source of all things. W-O-R-D, then, means this, the creation, according to divine laws, from the universal creative fluid, in the tomb, cave or manger, of the earth solar plexus, of that perfect one seed, fish, fruit, Jesus, Vishnu, Joshua, Moses, Horus, etc., etc., which has the power to spiritualize, regenerate the Adam man, so that he becomes the Lord God from heaven, the Word made flesh. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, 14. We realize, then, that word does not refer to speech. The Hebrew letter which signifies speech is phi, the seventeenth letter. It refers to the force which dispenses the essence of life, which gives it the means of perpetually renewing its creations after destruction. We can speak destructively and we have the power to speak constructively. The two letters O and R combined are used to specify a precious substance, originally referred to as gold, for the ancients realized that the sun's rays, which they called golden, precipitated in the human body and formed creative substance. The Bible tells us that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word or seed that proceedeth out of the mouth of God proving that, in order to truly live, we must save the precious substance. In anatomy, the passageway underneath the sutures which leads down into the thalamus is the mouth of God, for it is from the cerebrum, the upper brain, that the most wonderful gift to the human body comes. This represents the unseen mouth. The visible mouth is the solar plexus. We can turn to the pages of Gray's Anatomy, or any good medical dictionary, and examine carefully the illustration of a 26-day-old fetus. We see, then, that almost the entire body consists of brain substance in fact. It looks like an elongated brain. The upper brain, or father-mother substance, is what furnishes the material from which the body is made. Verily it is the Alpha, the beginning. Degenerates, and people living in excesses, have become greatly deficient in this precious material, and the whole appearance of the body testifies to the desecration of the temple. Man can become regenerated, and thus save his soul, which is sown in corruption, so that it may be raised in corruption. We can compare speech with the operations of the processes of the planets. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. The heavens, or the planets in the heavens, have their own particular influence operation or speech upon this planet of ours. We admit that the moon rules the tides, that without the sun we could not live, so why deny the influence of the other planets? Thus we see 
from the foregoing. That word and voice or speech are two entirely different things, and that John meant the precious creative substance when he spoke of the word. Now this is the parable. The seed is the word of God. Luke 8, 11. Seed, word, and God are all synonyms of one and the same thing, the wonderful creative substance, the universal essence from which all things are brought forth, and in which all things are. The scriptures, or allegories and parables of the Bible, are the only writings that give us information as to what the Word of God is. Therefore, in this book, we will quote what is written there in regard to it. Seed is the cause, the nucleus of everything, therefore a seed is the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. The fluid, oil, or marrow which flows down the spinal cord, comes from the upper brain, the Creator or Father, the Most High, and is known in physiology as ovum, or generative seed that life essence which creates the human form of corruptible flesh. In the Greek, from which the New Testament was translated, this marrow is called Christ, which is the Greek word for oil. When this oil is refined, transmuted, lifted up, raised, it becomes so highly vitalized that it regenerates the body and overcomes the last enemy, death. How can it be lifted up? By lifting up the Son of Man, the Seed, the Word, the Savior. The oil Christ in the spinal cord is the salt which is mentioned in the Bible and the Savior is the seed, or Jesus. The salt and the Savior both come from the same source, the same place, the Father, the upper brain. In the Bible allegory, the seed, Jesus, is made to say, without my Father I can do nothing. The material from the Father which forms the seed has gone through a different process from that which forms the oil. The chemical formula of the oil is J-O-H-N, and Jesus was baptized or anointed of John, not by John, as it is incorrectly quoted. See article on OIL. If we lift up or raise the oil in the spinal cord, by the power of the seed, by saving it, it must be a physiological and chemical operation within the body of each of us.